Welcome to our webinar today on digital marketing trends. And I'm really excited about today because Susan and I've got back from a whirlwind, like three weeks of some of the top digital marketing trends out there. And it's been an exciting, our heads are ready to explode. Susan's going to get into that. But I just have to tell you, it's been a really, really amazing to see in just a little over a year where our agency's gone from and to, and now I have to tell you, Susan has been appointed to, well, let's see, uh, one board. She's on the board for Infusionsoft. She was recently, as of a couple days ago, appointed to the board for Digital Marketer, which is a huge deal for us. That is going to be the biggest digital marketing um, group in the, in the world, I think, because they've been taken over by a big European firm that's going to really expand this globally. And she is front and center on that board. And uh, she spoke there at that event this past week. Um, so, I mean, there's lots and lots of stuff going on with, uh, with us and I mean, don't let me forget this. Susan is also being asked to speak in Times Square this fall at the premier agency event for all digital marketing agencies. So you guys are in the right place. If you want to be in the know for digital marketing, Susan knows what she's doing. She's generated over a billion dollars in sale in sales, um, online selling products doing what she does best and um, we've got some super exciting announcements to share with you today so if you're with the agency if you're not with the agency doesn't matter you've got something you got to stick to the end of this webinar to learn about what's coming and, and let me tease this even a little bit more our coaches don't even know about this yet <laughs> they don't even know about it so if you're a coach you better stay on so you know what we're up to so anyway with no further ado i'd like to introduce susan Sly. Well, thanks so much, Diana. I am excited to be here. I want to acknowledge all of you for being here live. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, television, whatever it is you're watching, um, this information is going to be relevant all through the year. And, and I would just encourage you to take notes. I'm going to be um, going off script quite a bit. I have notebooks full of notes for the last three weeks. We have been at digital marketing conferences. And I think that the, the big thing is that, um, you know, Bruce Corkill, one of our clients, I, I know he's here on the live event. Bruce said it best when he said in a video he produced, which is about disruption. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of statistics. I'm going to be sharing um, just, you know, really a state of the union, if you can imagine. And I'd love to just take a moment and share a little bit of my journey with digital marketing super quickly. So back in 1995, the internet was four years old. And, uh, I was told you need to have a website. So I listened. I started my first website. It was called makingfitterbodies.com. And I was a health coach because I was a certified holistic nutritionist, trainer, celebrity trainer. And that website back in those days when you had less than, um, I think 2% of the world was on the internet. And as people started searching health coach, I ended up having a client who was a major league baseball player. I had another client out of Pennsylvania and I would do virtual coaching with these clients over the phone and just think about that you know I was way ahead of my time and then um, from there, when I had my health club um, back in 1997, we had one of the first health club websites. Uh, we attracted a lot of attention. We were getting thousands of hits a day. Um, even people like Billy Blanks, Tybo, back in the day, reached out to us because of what we were doing. And you know, we were really just crushing it. We were one of the first health clubs where you could purchase your membership online. Uh, think about that. Back in um, 2003, I really um, I kept my own website going, my brand going, and I launched myself into the network marketing direct sales space and uh, generated for that company over $1.6 billion in sales, um, personal, personal revenues totaling millions and millions and millions of dollars, um, and you know, continue to use those techniques today in all of my businesses. And so what I'm going to share with you today is going to apply to whatever business you have, we're going to talk about uh, the death of websites. So I want you to write that down um, and uh, have a lot of fun with that. We're going to talk about what you need, what you don't need. Um, and we're really going to have a lot of fun. And I would just say to you, if you have any questions after this, just definitely connect with us. Um, because again, you know, I want to acknowledge all of you because it, it isn't 
always an easy topic, right? You know, Diana and I were at one conference, there were thousands of people. Then we went to another conference, there were thousands of people. And everyone from stage is saying the exact same thing. We're in a digital world, but let me jump in and really get in the weeds here and tell you why that is. And so um, here's a photo from whatever day this was, pardon me, it was Tuesday. Um, I went to hot yoga this morning. I just lay it all out there. I went to hot yoga and sometimes my nose runs a little bit after that. Um, and so there I am with Marcus Mur Murphy. Marcus is the foremost LinkedIn trainer in the world. Um, and this was a panel I did with other um, women who are running very successful agencies. I am the founder and CEO of Agency A. Diana is the president of the agency. And we've helped hundreds of clients, uh, people just like you, take their power back and really implement um, all of these digital strategies. And you know, you may look at this and what you see is, oh, there's Susan and she's on these panels and being asked to speak. But what you don't know is I was the person who I went from having the website, doing all this stuff to telling myself a story that I wasn't technical. I really backed away from the digital space, even though I was an early adopter. And you know, as I started to, um, I continued to build my brand, the one I had started in the early 90s. But as the world started to change, what I began to do was hire people to do the digital marketing for me. So I was spending, and I want you to write this number down, $10,000 a month. And that didn't include my social media. That was to have an agency simply build campaigns for me and manage my website. So I would get an idea and then I'd reach out to the agency and then that agency would take usually 90 days to implement. So it was one idea and $30,000 later. And so last year when um, I you know, really took back my power, it was actually back in 2017 and I jumped back into technology and I learned how to do the things um, and I'm constantly constantly learning. Right now, um, I'm taking a course on optimizing um, Facebook advertising. I'm going to talk about that today. I'm also taking a course at MIT in artificial intelligence because write this down. I, and put your name in, made a decision to take control of my future. And so one of the things we want to do with Agency 8 was be so disruptive. So for clients who were on a budget, we wanted to teach them how to digitally market. So they weren't spending $10,000 a month on an agency. But, you know, I will confess, one of the things I learned is not a lot of people were ready for it and they weren't doing everything we told them. So we'd say, Hey, do, um, get a Facebook business page, do Facebook lives um, there. Don't put your branded products in the background if you're in network marketing and they, they didn't do it. They were still on their personal page. And the reality is when it comes to things like Facebook, Facebook doesn't want you to have your business on your personal page. They want you to pay for advertising. So we realized this year that we have to have two tiers. And so people we're working with at the agency, they're we have a, a whole group of awesome self-starters, but we are going to be adding more services because the reality is people, there is a lot of confusion out there. I think you'd all agree with that. Um, I want to talk about my dad and give him a shout out. So my dad invented the microprocessor. So if you're watching this on a laptop, thank my dad. His name is Joe. If um, He also helped invent the pacemaker. So when I was a little kid, um, my dad got me coding at an early age. So I was coding on an Atari uh, back in the day. I was writing code in university. And I've always had this, this you know, love of technology and how we use technology for good, how we use, even now, how we use artificial intelligence for good and, and how we use digital marketing to help find our ideal clients. How many of you have clients who are not ideal? People like you see them text and you're like, oh my gosh, no. Well, in digital marketing, we have the ability to, to connect with our ideal client, even if that client is in Pittsburgh or if they're in um, Dublin, Ireland or wherever they are and, and bring them our services. And, and it really has shrunk the world. And my dad was ahead of his time because when I was in grade 10, he was like, Susan, you need to take typing. And I'm like, dad, typing? Are you kidding? I don't want to be a secretary. That's what we called them, not executive assistants back in the 80s. I apologize if I'm offending anyone. And um, my dad said, no, Susan, because someday everyone's going to have computers. And so all as an author of seven books, I'm proud to tell you, I wrote every one of them myself, thanks to my dad. But my dad and Sun Tzu, which is a great um, philosopher, what my dad, there's my dad. I'm throwing him an 80th birthday party this year. He's amazing. Um, 
have in common is that in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. And that's what Sun Tzu wrote. So my dad had me at um, 12 years old reading Sun Tzu and all of this philosophy. And Sun Tzu also said, um, adapt to your terrain. And some of you may be here going, have I missed the boat? Susan, you were doing online businesses um, back in the 90s. Have I missed it? No, my friends, you haven't missed it. It's getting better. It's getting easier. Um, there were so many um, marketing platforms that were so confusing and you would spend you know five hundred thousand dollars a month and and they were tough and now you can get a great marketing platform for about 99 bucks a month and and you can really be in charge of your own business so my goal is to take you from uncertainty to certainty and um, I you know I wrote who I wanted to live into this year and, um, you know, as a woman, as a mom, and, and I came down to five words and I actually have a post-it on my laptop and the words are certainty. So anytime I show up to teach, do a Bulletproof Monday, a podcast, that my goal is to provide you with certainty. So everything I do, it's, you know, leaving with something that is tangible, salient. It's also clarity, cutting through all of the nonsense and dogma and creating a clear path, generating results for me and my clients, um, doing so with love, but also with the straight talk. How many of you are good with straight talk? Just put it in the chat right now. You can be okay with that. Awesome. All right. So let's take a look at some numbers and I see some of my friends, all my clients are my friends, but um, I see some of my friends are on here. They love the data. They love the stats. So let's take a look at this. So in 1995, remember I said I had my first online business, the online global sales community was $131 million. Okay, 131. Amazon was a bookseller back in the day, right? Let me just ask quick poll. How many of you have purchased a book from Amazon in the last 30 days? In the chat? Yes. And how many of you have purchased something that's not a book from Amazon in the last 30 days? <laughs> yeah, right? Of course. So we know, you know, we know that Amazon is no longer a bookseller, but let's take a look at this. So in 2018, the total US online sales, this is just in America, was $517 billion. Write that down. You know, how many of you want a piece of that? You know, you don't, you don't need necessarily, you know, a huge piece of that. You know, I know some of you'd be like, hey, I'd be okay with a quarter million dollars of that or whatever. But it was up 15% over the previous year. 15%. Of the 517, Amazon did $141.92 billion. So, um, you know, when you think about online revenue and basically, you know, everything that you want almost can be purchased on Amazon or eBay. You can buy houses on eBay, you can buy cars on eBay. There are people kids making money just reselling on eBay. And actually, I didn't put a photo of him. My daughter's boyfriend, who's now 19 years old, he makes a multiple um, six-figure, I don't, well, no, he doesn't make multiple six figures. He, he has 10 clients that he works with. They're all online brands in the automotive space, retainer clients. And at 19 years old, um, I believe he's making around $50,000 a month. And how he got his start at the ripe age of 19, I said to him, um, how did you get your start? And he said, actually, how I started was I was reselling things from um, ClickBank and eBay and stuff like that. And I started to make in high school a few thousand dollars a month. And I want you to write this word down, expansive. You know, the beautiful thing is I read this article um, on Market Watch yesterday about this attorney in California who has 11 side hustles, 11 side hustles. Are you kidding me? So, and they said, well, why are you doing it? He's like, first, I just want to pay off my student loan. Now I just, I want to become financially free. And the beautiful thing with the online marketing world is I don't believe in ever you should be like, if you're in network marketing, be in two companies. That's just bad. Don't ever do that. You heard it from me. But could you have your network marketing company and could you write a book and do a book funnel? Of course you could. There's so many things in all the roads and it's just so easy because write this down if I you if I can do it for one thing I can do it for anything 
I'm going to say it again. If I can do it for one thing, I can do it for anything. And that's the thing. It's these tactics and these strategies that we teach at the agency. They're not so secular, but let's take a look at this. So digital buyers worldwide, you know, I used to be a, a college professor. Now I've got the pen out and I'm pointing. So I, I have to laugh at myself and people are going to laugh at me anyway. So I'll, I'll be the first one. So check it out. So digital buyers to the percentage of internet users. So the number of internet users is, you know, going up and up and up, but digital buyers, this is interesting. It's increasing, increasing, increasing. And, you know, I know that as a mom, I buy a lot of Christmas presents online. Um, I, you know, birthday presents last night, I was helping Emery with her homework. Um, I went on Nordstrom. I bought her some clothes, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's easy. I, I live this is really sad, but I live probably around four miles from the Nordstrom and I just can't be bothered. Like, I'm not even kidding. We live in this world where um, we want to reduce the amount of friction, write this down, friction, and companies that don't get this, are get, we're gonna see a big problem with these companies. So friction is the amount of steps a buyer needs to take in order to connect with the person who's selling, right? And friction in any sales process. So I have to, it doesn't it drive you crazy. You just want to sign up to, you know, volunteer at school and you have to create a whole darn account. Like it's so stupid. And then you have a password for 50 million things. There's so much friction and companies that are reducing friction like Amazon, that's why they're doing so well. So quick story. So we're on it. I'm on an airplane, um, you know, flying. And I see this guy is reading this book on um, YouTube selling. I don't know if I have the book in front of me. No, I don't. Anyway, I'm like, that's really cool. So I said, is it a good book? He goes, yeah, I know the author. He's amazing. I said, great. And so I went on Amazon. I pull my bag, you know, we had landed taxi stop. stopped. I pull my bag from the overhead and I go on Amazon, look it up click one click purchase right talk about reducing friction and it was at my house when i got back from the conference and so as a, a solopreneur a business owner you may be marketing a company you may be marketing your own product but one of the things you want to do is reduce as much friction as possible that's going to increase your sales and so these are retail e-commerce sales and by 2020 um you can see just this epic growth um, that is going. Um, it's just incredible. All right. So 30% of people worldwide are self-employed. So this number is growing. 50% of people want to be their own boss. 50% of businesses don't make it past their fifth birthday. And, you know, less than a third make it to year number 10. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. And daily, there are 35 billion searches per day on Google, but 46% of buyers are seeking local businesses. So one of the things that you want to do in building your online presence, um, I'm going to give you some rapid tips, things you can execute today. So it's great to use a local hashtag so as an example people do search hashtags so um let's say as an example um margo drake um let's say she was um I don't know, I'm gonna make this up, is a lifestyle coach. So she might, let's pretend she lived in Redondo Beach. She doesn't, but I'm just making this up. She might go, lifestyle coach, Redondo Beach. Now, you may say, well, Susan, that's like really secular, but people are looking for local businesses. If you're using Google, um, it's good to potentially do AdWords locally, that kind of thing. Um, that can really help you. If you're marketing, another company, um, say you're in network marketing, you will have to be able to use that kind of thing without using that company name because that's not allowed generally speaking, but there are things you can do. So using your hashtags and really alternating on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, alternating hashtags with broad and specific. So if you post something like a result that um, a client has received, that is a good time to post local because people are searching those hashtags.
All right, so I want to share with you just to expand your mind. So this kid, Ricky Gutierrez, lives in Arizona. He makes over $10 million a year at 23 years old. So he has a marketing platform and he, what he does, he has a, a group. He teaches day trading. I believe it's $47 to get into the group. And then he upsells to a $997 product. Um, he might be making more than this. He's friends with my daughter's boyfriend, but think about that. Think about that. So what he does is he has his YouTube channel, he has his how-to videos, he markets on Instagram, he also, um, I'm not sure if he markets on Facebook, but he runs ads there, he brings people into his funnel, invites them at a low point of entry, and then upsells him. How many of you would like to have been making 20, 10 million a year at um, age 23? Just in the chat right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I know it's just, it's again, it's about being expansive, right? Like how many of you would like to make 10 million a year now? Yeah, of course, right? And so one of the things that um, I've always had an expansive money mindset and it drives me crazy. I'm just gonna be very direct here. It drives me crazy when people get so stuck and so small-minded. There is a lot of money to be made out there um, and you need to get okay with receiving money, but you have to add more in value than you take in money. So even at our agency, 99 freaking dollars a month, get your marketing platform and we teach stuff like this and more stuff for free. Like, and and unfortunately not everyone values it and they'll go use some system that I have to laugh that just markets like specifically for one niche sector but you're never gonna make this kind of money if there's really only two marketing platforms you can use and I know which one Ricky uses you can only make this kind of money using one of the two marketing platforms Okay, Diana, I said it. I knew I was going to at some point and I just slipped out of my mouth. This girl is making $444,000 a month. Um, she does a challenge to a $997 upsell. Um, so um, in the fitness space. So there you have it. How many of you would like to make $444,000 a month? <laughs> I like it. Brian's expansive. I love it. So I want you to write this word down traffic. Okay. Because some of the people get really misled. They don't understand anyone online, whether they're in network marketing, fitness, coaching, life coaching, influencer marketing, they're all spending money on traffic. So for her to make this amount of money, she's per month, she spends about $36,000 a month on traffic. I don't know what Ricky spends. I will work on finding out. So thinking about this is understanding the way the game is played. It used to be, in 2008, you would just post something on Facebook and you get inboxed and that's the way it rolled. But Facebook is a big company and they said, and they own Instagram. So they're like, no, we want you to pay to play. And so I'm going to walk you through effective advertising trends. Um, and I will tell you that in, um, is some of you are in the network marketing space and I'm one of the few agencies that actually talks about both the areas. Um, some, some people won't even touch network marketing. I think network marketing is a great training ground because you don't have to produce your own products and things like that. But, um, I will tell you that anyone making a significant amount of money online, including the top network marketing, um, people, the top income earners in almost every company, they actually are running traffic. It might be a thousand a month in spend, four thousand a month in spend. Um, you know, they're marketing themselves. They're marketing, hey, come work with us. They're not mentioning their company. They're creating a lot of curiosity, and that's what they're doing. But we're living in a digital marketing world, and that's the thing you have to understand. You can't be like this guy, like, yeah, it's all fine. I'm gonna wear a bag on my head, and I'm just gonna keep posting and praying the P and P, as my friend Stephanie is here. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> we can't do the P and P. You know, guys, it doesn't work like that anymore. It, the post and pray, it isn't. People can can decide what they want to see from you and what they don't want to see. You have to. When someone is scrolling on their phone. 
which you know now it's about 70 percent plus are looking at social media on their phone there you have to catch attention and you only have literally one to two seconds to catch attention so you either catch attention with an image you catch attention with a video and i'm going to talk about those things um, briefly today just keeping on time so let's talk about some marketing trends so the highly paid marketers have a unique presence. Please write that down. There is a CRM system out there that's like, oh, we will give you an RSS feed and we're just gonna re reposition blogs from you know a company so you're all posting the same stuff. It doesn't work like that. You need a unique presence. When a buyer is deciding between you and someone else, it's that unique presence that is gonna do it. So, you know, I don't know how to tell you this. I, just a little Ron Burgundy humor from Anchorman is, you know, sometimes people have a hard time putting themselves out there. And especially for women, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this, but I can promise you, your tribe is out there. The people that you are looking for are looking for you. One of my mentors always said that, Susan, the people you are looking for are looking for you. Your tribe is truly out there. So let's talk about amateur versus professional in 2019. So the amateur is choosing only one social media platform. That's what I was telling you to do two years ago. Now that's changed. Uh, doesn't know who or where their ideal customer is. They're repositioning other people's content, um, out of date information. Um, the professional, they know who their ideal customer is. They're using three plus social media platforms. Um, they rank when someone searches their name, they rank number one for their name because they're putting out so much content and they're consistently producing unique content. So what kind of content? Unique content. And you may be like, well, Susan, no one, wants to hear what I have to say. They do. Remember, I said that the people you're looking for are looking for you. I want to pause. I want you to go on your social media right now and it could be Twitter. It could be, you know, whatever. And I want you to give that shout out. Just say, you know, on with Susan Sly, she just said the people that I'm looking for are looking for me. And, and the reason I'm asking you to do that is because you can also position yourself to um, leverage other people's audiences. So I just gave you a bunch of my audience for free. Like you can be like, oh yeah, I actually know Susan. She's a real person. So one of the things that professionals do is they will take a look at their social media platforms. They'll take a look at the people they know who are influencers and they will do everything they can to get their attention. So they might send them a message. Hey, can I, um, um, mention your blog in an article I'm writing. Hey, um, I just got a message from someone. They said, Hey, can I um, mention your blog and my blog? And I'm like, totally mention your, my blog and your blog. Um, you know, podcast guests, uh, Neil Patel is like, Hey, if you want me to be on your podcast, let me know. I'm like, Hey, Neil, I want you to be on my podcast. And within two seconds, he was like booked on my podcast. Um, so it's, it's, you know, one of the things we teach and I've always been teaching is you want to write a list of 10 people that you know, and you want to see how you can connect to them and re, you know, reposition yourself by association while you're building your professional brand. Does that make sense, everybody? Just say yes in the chat if it does. Okay, all right. Next, um, so Gary V, you know, he's, he's Twitter, he's Instagram, he is on Facebook, um, you know, he's everywhere. And, you know, he like literally um, is, you know, he's producing tons and tons of content. And you may say, well, Gary has a professional content team. He does, but in the beginning when he was just the wine guy and he was one of the early adopters of this whole concept of be everywhere and plus his YouTube channel, he was posting it all himself. And I will tell you a lot of the content I deploy, I am posting it all myself. And so, and even now, the amount of content I'm posting now to get people's attention is probably three times as much as I was posting last year. And that, and it is really and truly, it's that constantly being out there, constantly being out there. And um, this guy, Brian, he's number, I know him, he's a friend of mine. He's number one in his network marketing company. He's got um, landing pages. He has funnels built. He, um, you know, wrote a book. Like, I'm not even kidding you. He is, he's got videos out there, 
digitally marketing himself. And you know, I'm, I'm going to be the first one to tell you that old school way of doing things. It doesn't, it doesn't work anymore because people are on line. And even if you meet someone at a yoga studio and they're like, Hey, let's go for coffee. Let's follow up there. The likelihood that they're going to check you out on social media first to make that decision is over 80%. I'll give you an example. There is this woman um, who owns a digital marketing agency, multiple million dollar agency. And, um, you know, we were chatting and um, we were on this panel at Traffic and Conversion. And then five minutes later, she comes up to me and she's like, I want to schedule an appointment with you. And I'm like, okay. She goes, I checked you out on social media and you are a marketing badass. Now, this is a multiple seven figure agency owner saying, I'm a marketing badass because she checked out my social media. And now she wanted, an appointment. Does this make sense? So I don't care who you are or what business you're in. People are going to check out your social media imprint before they decide to do business with you. And it's up to you to control what that imprint looks like. So let's talk about lead generation and capture super quick. So professionals, amateurs. So amateurs are still only posting on their Facebook personal page. Good Lord. Um, they're inconsistent on social media. There's no method to capture interest from social media. Um, they don't know what a pixel is. Um, sometimes connect and often follows up. Um, I'm gonna, I don't want you ever to feel bad. I will, if you don't know what a pixel is, so Facebook has something called a pixel. And what you do is you install that pixel on your landing page. Websites are dying. Um, you don't really need a website unless you have multiple product offerings and layers and things like that. So what most um, highly paid marketers will do is they will um, put a pixel on a sales page and they'll build one sales page for each campaign they have going. And then what they'll do is they'll track through Facebook who actually hit up that page and then they'll retarget people. So if someone comes to Hadassah's landing page and then um, they don't buy, she can, they're going to start to see ads from Hadass. That's called retargeting using a pixel. Um, professionals are gathering leads from social media. They're directing to a landing page. They're categorizing the leads as they come in. They're gathering leads. They have automated follow-up. Uh, one of my influencers that I'm working with right now, a client, we're going to do a big challenge funnel for her. And she was hilarious because she just sent me a text before this. She's like, how to lead, uh, to call them twice, nothing. So I've put them in my automated follow-up sequence with my um, marketing platform that I use through the agency. So now she's like automatically following up with this person and she doesn't have to worry about it. Set it and forget it. They're spending money on Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, so here are some things that big um, influencers are doing, but you can do them too. And I will give you a little teaser. We are actually doing for the first time um, something that's coming up and I can't tell you exactly what it is, but if you don't really know how to do these things, this is coming up, I will tell you. So they're doing things like challenge groups, free master classes. I just did a training on those, um, free video series, recipes, free coaching, free eBooks, free book, pay for shipping, uh, live events, like all of this stuff. But what you want to do is begin with something that's free. Um, you can do low cost if you've already got, um, you know, some kind of brand traction or you have an advertising spend. Let me give you an example. If my friend Steve um, wanted to do a challenge group and I'm making this up and it was for guys in their forties and fifties who, you know, were business owners, they travel a lot and they just like are on the road and constantly want to lose weight. So let's say he was going to charge $47 for 30 days to do that. Um, he would have to run traffic because people don't know him as that guy who can help to get the result. So let's say he decided he, he was going to start with like small with 10 guys and he's going to charge $47 a month. There's something called a CPA. Uh, it's a cost per acquisition. And so right now in the beginning, until Steve starts to get some social proof that what he's doing works, he might have to spend $470 to get those 10 dudes, but because he's going to upsell them to a product or service that, you know, it's kind of a loss at the front end. And that's how advertising works. So you can't go, the guy who made $20 million his first year on the survival flashlight, what he did, he 
bought traffic, sold the survival flashlights, and then he bought more traffic with his profits and did more traffic. So you can't, you know, even just putting yourself out there on LinkedIn and doing everything at some point, you're going to have to step into professional marketer mode. And there are ways to run traffic and ways not to run traffic. But some of the stuff, if you don't have a Facebook business page right now, it's free to do it. You need to have one because you can't run traffic from your personal page. And I'll tell you in your Facebook business page, you're going to have a lot more analytics. You can see where people come from. Um, you can see um, their gender, their age, all of that good stuff. And you get to know, I used to think my avatar was only women. Well, Brian and Bruce and a whole bunch of you who tune in every Monday for Bulletproof Monday, shouts out to Bruce. He was in the hospital and he was on Bulletproof Monday. I learned initially it was like, you know, 95% women. Now my audience is like 35% dudes. And as a woman who was raised by a single man, I love um, that I get to work with men and that men are really appreciating my message. So I learned that from Facebook. So it changed how I market to everyone um, because it was not as secular around women. Um, Facebook monthly users, you can see 2 billion a month. Um, it's just crazy. So people are spending more in ads last year in 2018, uh, 2018, it was about $7 per thousand impressions. Now an impression um, on Facebook doesn't mean that someone's buying from you. It just means they kind of saw it, whether they like it or something else. This year, it's about $10 for seven, uh, for a thousand impressions. Um, this, I will tell you in this um, fun thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to be teaching Facebook advertising like you've never been taught Facebook advertising before. I'm going to be um, one of the people teaching me is Dennis Yu, who is the best at Facebook advertising. He was making 80,000 a day on Facebook um, in 2008. I mean, he's so smart. Um, so I'm going to teach you how to do the Facebook advertising matrix and it's sick. Um, so really, really cool. So anyway, this is, these are some examples of ads, um, really a lot of conversion um, here. They're just, they have to get your attention in the scroll, right? And think about it. Most people now they're ADD and I I don't say that without cause their attention span is less than a goldfish i did i pulled a study and showed people that not that long ago so they're scrolling they're scrolling they're scrolling you have to get their attention right and so you don't always have to pay to boost um but that being said you know back in um Back in 1997, I was spending 5,000 a month on Yellow Pages ads for my gym. Um, I knew I had to have a marketing budget. People, today's marketers, don't think they need a marketing budget. You need to have a marketing platform and a marketing budget. And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's not one person you can look at, as I said, who makes over a million dollars a year, online marketing, network marketing, they don't have an ad budget, they do. Uh, retargeting works. So what retargeting is, is if you have a marketing platform, so Hadass, she has a marketing platform, a list. She can dump that list into Facebook um, in her business page and she can run ads just to people who are on her list. So I have lists that are segmented. Um, one of my lists through a, um, a campaign that I ran um, in late 2018, it was a challenge. It was a keto style challenge. I grew my list by 9,000 people um, basically in a four week period. Now, um, I haven't targeted marketed those people, but I could if I wanted to. Um, there's a reason that I wouldn't, um, but I could. So all of this retargeting. So big companies, once you're on a list, the reason you see ads for things is because they dumped your email into Facebook and they're targeting you because you've shown some interest. So how does retargeting work? Um, it works to the point that it's 70% more likely to convert previous visitors into paying customers. It results in a 147% increase in average conversion rates. Um, it can increase your branded search by over 500%. Retargeting can deliver a set 100% increase to overall site and lead pages visitors. Who's learned something so far before I wrap my part up? Who's learned something? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, so here's the big kicker. Having a video on a landing page increases conversions by 86% in 2019. So I know for myself, you know, sometimes I'm like creating, creating, and 
I, I'm sure I can be honest with all of you. As a woman who's 46, sometimes I'm like, oh, my hair doesn't look great, or I have a pimple on my chin, and I'm like, I don't want to shoot a video, even on my phone, to put it up on a landing page. But you know, the reality is it's going to increase those conversions by 86%. So I think we all just have to embrace let go of being perfect. Perf being perfect is a form of procrastination and just get those videos up there. Um, marketing platforms in 2019, just super, super quick. Um, so amateur doesn't use one. Um, they, you know, don't follow up consistently. There's no professional follow-up system. Professionals in 2019, they're automated follow-up, there's custom follow-up, they have sales pages, there's more personal conversations. Um, so they're take, they're, remember I said you want a more qualified buyer? So they're, they never lose the lead because the person has you know, found them somehow, they've got their attention, they're giving them an irresistible offer, they're getting their information, and then that person from after they've gone through that, which is very little friction, that person can give their first name, maybe their, their email, or they can go straight to an appointment booking page. But again, um, you know, it comes down to that traffic, right, that you're going to be able to do this, but every marketer making any money whatsoever is using one of two systems. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so I want you to be a champion marketer and I just wanna hear before I pass it over to Diana, what are some things you just learned from what I shared? <laughs> yes, you do, Donna. What do you learn? What have you learned? And I would love, again, some shout outs on social media because then you guys can help me create my content today, which would be great, <laughs> that I need to be trained in this. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you're not behind. You're aware now, and that's the awareness is better, right? Understanding retargeting better. Need to be on more than one social media platform. Seeking local. Can you guys all start doing local hashtags today? Could you? Yeah. How much is that going to cost you? Zero. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Awesome. Yes, you can. You 100% can. Awesome. All right. Well, with that, I want to um, stop my share and I'm going to, um, we, I want to, you know, uh, if you're feeling at all like, oh my gosh, I have a lot to learn. We're going to do something really cool um, starting in a couple weeks. So don't go away because um, we're only taking a certain number of people. So with that, um, Diana, just so you guys know, um, back in, oh gosh, you know, around 10 years ago, her monthly ad spend was multiple five figures a month. Uh, Google AdWords, she was doing um, online traffic, um, targeted advertising. This woman knows how to market. She had a multi-million dollar online business. They had a physical retail site too. Um, she was selling big ticket items. She is really and truly a genius. She's also my travel partner after three weeks of nonstop conferences. So I want to pass it over to the president of Agency 8, Diana Frerich. <laughs> hey, Susan. Thank you for all that great information. It was good for me to remember all that too. We've been, our minds are overflowing, right? Can you hear me okay? Because I have my little headset in because people like it when I wear this. All right, oh, wonderful. Well, thank you for that, Susan. And Susan's gonna come back, you guys, so don't leave. I got some great tips here, but she's got some exciting news. Like I said, pretty much she and I, and maybe Tisha are the only ones that know that this is about to go down. Um, but we're super excited to share that with you. But before we do, I just wanted to share what I thought was a big revelation for me at the events we went to. I mean, there was tons and tons of stuff, and we have not begun to unleash all of that on you. We're giving you a taste of what we've uncovered, but what I think would be helpful for you to learn might be the thing that was the biggest revelation for me. But before I do, I need to step back in time to the 1980s because this is where the, the old thought press process for me started, and maybe you're still there in the 80s too in your thought process. This is old school for me. This is 1980. I was a sales trainer back in the day, and I'm, I trained mostly men salespeople for two weeks they'd come in for a two-week boot camp and i would train them how to go out into the world and do business to business uh sales and um <laughs> it's like and the whole thing back then the whole drill was features and benefits that's what we drilled into them asking the right questions so you could really get into those 
features and benefits of our product line. Now, a lot has changed. And I think for, it's for some of us, we're still in this 1980 mode of selling. Let me tell you what we learned at the digital marketing conferences and maybe into intuitively some of you are already doing this. I think I've already kind of been doing this, but this is the trend because what we learned is those who tell the best stories will rule the world. Now, this is the coolest part ever. If your story is good enough, you don't even need to talk about features and benefits. If you just give such a great story, people will line up for miles just to buy it because they want in on that story. They want to be part of that tribe. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about what I mean by that and kind of quantify that a little bit. But let me kind of go over some, some things in general. Modern st storytelling and marketing. Now, I don't care what business you're in, it, this will apply to your business. You just have to look at what you do and reframe it and create the story around it. Um, now, why stories are so powerful is they create a temporary sus uh, suspension of belief. They stimulate dopamine, which makes you feel good, serotonin, which makes you feel like you've got a little bit of a status, that you're kind of a part of a club, oxytocin, that love, that, you know, oh, I'm in love kind of feeling, endorphins, which creates excitement. That's what stories do. That's why they're so powerful. And now here's something that was really weird. They said at this training we went to is nothing is interesting other than trouble. I know that sounds weird, but what they mean by that, by the way, this training, I have to tell you, is by a gentleman by the name of Perry Belcher. Look him up on YouTube. He's one of my all-time favorite um, trainers in digital marketing. He's a little on the raw side. He has, a little, he has some uh, colorful language, so just be warned ahead of time, but he's hysterical. But his training was awesome on this subject, and, and he's generated probably, I'm going to guess, billions maybe in sales. Um, because he's so good at what he does. And some of the stuff he's done, you may have seen um, uh, and maybe even bought. So anyway, what he means by nothing is as interesting other than trouble is that people are captivated by stories of trouble and like things are going bad. And I don't know, it's like, if you notice when people cuddle and they gossip, what do they talk about? Oh, the so-and-so, oh, did you hear what happened to so-and-so? I know that sounds weird, but it's so true. But what they want to know, they, they hear this trouble and they're like, oh, they're captivated and you can pull people in by talking about trouble. You'll see what I mean by that in, in a minute. Um, people want to see the problems. Just like I said, they want to see the problems. So it's not always about, you know, peaches and cream and everything's happy, hunky-dory. They want to see that maybe you went through a dark time. Maybe you, you overcame something. And you should use stories in your email, social posts, landing pages, and more. So a bad story will be a great sales letter any day. I know that sounds weird. You will see. You'll see. Now, the very first thing you do when you create a story is you need to pull the buyer into your story. And the number one way to do this is by asking a question that forces them into the story. So I thought this little, um, I, I heard this story and it, it was mind blowing to me. The difference between his first version of how he marketed himself and the second version was $20 million by this little technique I'm about to show you. Many of you have heard of uh, Dean Grazi Graziosi. He wrote the book Million, um, Millionaire Success Habits. I have this book. It's a great book. And he tells the story where he's always a fan of Larry King growing up. He just watched him and watched him. He was just fascinated by him. And Dean wanted to do this infomercial style marketing um, infomercial about himself. So he thought, I'm going to build a set that looks like a Larry King set with a microphone. And then I'm going to hire, I'm going to, I'm going to have enough money someday that I'm going to hire Larry King and fly him in, put him on the set. And I'm going to make it like he's interviewing me. And this is way past when the Larry King show had ended. So he had to take Larry out of retirement, hire him for the day and pretend to do a Larry King show. And so Dean wrote the script. He studied all the best Larry King episodes and he, he did it just like Larry King would start a regular show. Hey, I'm Larry King. I'm here with this, you know, Dean Graziosi. He's this, he's this, he's so great, blah, 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 all this great stuff, right? And so this was what happened in the first version they filmed. You guys, this story is mind blowing. When you just catch this very, very subtle technique, you can apply this to your business, okay? So Here's what Dean did the first time he filmed this. In version one, he had 
Larry introduced him with all the accolades and they did B-roll behind it showing Dean on stage and Dean hit with his book, Dean having people, you know, mobs of people, audiences, huge audiences, and they did this big to-do, right? Because that's really what you expect when you introduce somebody. Well, that story, that little, that infomercial, they put it in the can, he launched it into the marketplace because he was the king of infomercials at the time. And it went flat on its face. It didn't do it the crickets, nothing. It didn't, didn't create any results for Dean. He, and he was mortified. He's like, gosh, I'm supposed to be this big infomercial guy. I put this in the, my dream piece out in the marketplace. It falls flat on it, its face. It doesn't do a thing for my business. He just was like so upset. He's like, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And he thought about it and he thought about it and he thought about it and then it hit him. It, he realized that he made that whole beginning piece about himself. Now, in today's marketing world, you have to be able to, in less than sometimes like 15 seconds, you have to pull that person in. There's so much noise out there. That person watching you, they're just scrolling, right? They're scrolling. You do it. You're guilty of it too. You're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You guys have seconds seconds to grab that person and yank them and stop them from scrolling and stop and pay attention to you. And if you're just talking about yourself, you're just talking about your product, you're not going to get them to stop scrolling. So what Dean realized, he says, look, people have short attention spans. I only have a few seconds. I need to pull them in right away and stop them from scrolling or changing the channel, whatever it was. This is the subtle change he made in his ad, he's and so he had Larry. He had to fly Larry back out and reshoot the very beginning only of the interview. And instead, in the very beginning, he had Larry look into the camera and say, "Tonight, I want to ask you a very tough question. Have you ever, in your adult life, looked in the mirror and thought, you know, I really thought my life would have turned out better?" Boom! You guys, that's now talking to the person watching and that person's like oh my gosh they're talking to me and it stops them you guys this is a multi-million dollar concept right here you just got to change the very few first few seconds of whatever your marketing is doing whether it's in an email a video or whatever you grab them and you pull them in and then from there you can start your story okay so that little change of that first 10 seconds, that first 10 seconds, this is what happened. $20 million in sales. Is that huge or what? How many of you are going into the marketplace telling your story like, hey, my name is Diana and I have the best product and this is what our, you know, the best results in the world. They don't care. You got to ask them. I'm telling you the easiest way to do it is to ask a question. You just got to ask them a question that will make them stop in their tracks and then pull them in. And then once you've got them pulled in, here are the next steps. You need to set a scene and you've got, this is going to create those oxytocin and serotonin and dopamine responses that you want in their brain right away because you want to, now you've got them, now you got to keep them. And the best way to do that is to set the scene by using words that talk about the color, the way things look, the sound, whether it's hot or cold, the date, time, whatever, all these little things help set the scene. You're telling a story, remember? Now keep in mind, you're not telling a big novel. You're just telling a very, very concise story. Now, this is a, something you might wanna take a screenshot of, and let me close this little window here. Uh, one second, so you get that. This, this is a powerful, powerful um, slide here because this is the story formula. And if you watch any really great movie, this is the formula. If you look at any really great, well-written sales letter, this is the formula. So your start would be maybe that question. And then you go into telling the story and you, you create, first of all, you got to kind of establish some, a routine makes like start. You don't want to start with conflict right out of the shoot. You got to start by bringing people into like, okay, status quo, but then something happens and then it gets worse and then there's a villain and maybe a love interest possibly but it gets worse then the sidekick shows up there's a little bit of a victory but tension rises and it seems like there's no way they'll ever get out of it and then there's huge obstacle is overcome and then there's relief lesson learned 
it's the girl better than before. That's the story formula. And if you don't believe me, I mean, think about some very well, mo well known movies that you know, like The Wizard of Oz. Think about it. It starts off routine, established routine. You know, Dorothy's just kind of, you know, at home singing on the farm, you know, hanging out. Boom, tornado comes. Then it, they, you know, she lands in Oz and kills the witch. And then there's the other witch that's the villain. Things get worse. And then she meets her sidekicks, which are the, um, you know, the three people there, the Scarecrow, Lion, and Tin Man. And then they have a little minor victory as they're going along, but then they get to Oz and Tensions. I mean, think about it. These are how these stories are told. Another one, if you think about Willy Wonka, I just think of all our childhood favorites, right? Same kind of thing. If you think about the formulas of these movies, they follow the storyline. And granted, you don't have time to do a movie, but you can tell a great story in a few minutes and still follow this, this path. So if you're not sure storytelling works in business, let me show you some proof that it does. And a great website to go check out to learn about this is significantobjects.com. I uh, learned this from Perry. He talked about, I'm like blown away by this. And here was the concept. They took 200 items purchased at thrift stores. Each item cost approximately $1.25 each. They're junky, just junk tchotchke stuff. And each object was given to one of 200 writers who were told to write a story, a compelling story using the formula about that item. Then the items were listed on eBay with the story the writer wrote. So all 200 items that were bought for 125, so we're talking about less than $300 were then sold on eBay for $8,000 because the stories were attached. For example, this coil of orange paper. They, the writer wrote a story, this amazing story, and it's not even a true story. They just write a novel practically about the story using the story formula, purchased for $1.99, sold with story for $57.50. And there was this wooden apple. They wrote this really compelling story, purchased for a dollar, sold for $102.50. You guys, this is crazy. Think about this. Are you just telling the wrong story? You've got products you're selling, services you're selling is your story not matching up. And that's why you're not making the money you should. Let me give you another example. I love these little cameras. They're called wise cameras. I, I mean, highly recommend them. Highly recommend them. I have like a couple here on my desk. I haven't even installed yet. I put them around my house so I can watch my dogs when I'm on a trip. They're cheap. They're like 20, 25 bucks or something. Um, wisecam.com and then you watch on your cell phone they're the they're the best little cameras and they have night vision and you can listen in I like but if you look at Amazon you go there and this is what you see what is this old school 1980s features and benefits right so what what can we do different about this if we were to write a sales letter this would be the old school sales letter we'd write with all the bullet points and what it is all right if you were to flip the script on this and write this in the way using the story formula, using this formula, here's what you might want to do in that email, in that video, in whatever you're putting out there. Here's how I would do it. I would say, have you ever woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of breaking glass? So now I'm pulling them in, right? I'm asking the question. It was 3 a.m. on a cold winter evening in December, setting the scene. It had been a normal, uneventful night and I'd went to bed at my normal time, established routine. So you can imagine my surprise when my world was turned upside down to the sound of shattered glass. I sat up in my bed to find a dark shadow standing over my bed, obstacle and villain. Suddenly my little dog Harley started barking and lunged in the dark at the burglar who ran from the room, sidekick and minor victory. But that was short lived as he quickly turned back around as I could see he had grabbed a large lamp and he had raised above my head and was as heading back toward my bed, tension rising, impossible to get away from. I rolled to the opposite side of the bed and grabbed a giant brass unicorn bookend from my nightstand and threw it at the burglar. And I heard a loud thud and scream, climax, obstacle overcome. He ran from the room and I heard him struggling to climb up the broken window. He'd come through, I grabbed my cell phone, called 911. The police were there in minutes and I thought they, uh, and they started searching the neighborhood. That was the relief. <clears throat> I grabbed my phone. Oh, that was wrong. Okay, I have a little mistake there. The police were there in minutes and they started searching the neighborhood. Okay, sorry, I put a little cut and paste error there. <laughs> Villain loses, lesson learned. Then I realized I had installed wise video cameras in my house. I extracted the memory card and uploaded the contents to my laptop. The quality of the night vision of that camera was clear. And within 24 hours, the police were able to track down the burglar scene in the video. Villain loses, lesson learned again. Now I sleep comfortably knowing he's off the streets and my home is protected with these amazing cameras better than before. 
Guys, that's the formula. Now, did you hear me talk about features and benefits of that camera? People might just buy that dang camera right then and there from that store thinking, oh my God, I don't want to be in that situation where I don't know who it is that broke into my home. This is the power of stories. Now, I literally wrote that in like two seconds. You can tell I copy and pasted and messed through. Anyway, the point is, if I took some time and really crafted that, I could really make a compelling story, right? That would be powerful. Now, better than this, right? Way better than this. And how many of you are selling what you do this way? How many of you are going right into the marketplace? You're not pulling that, that person in. You guys, we're in the era of storytelling. That is what we learned at the digital marketing event. So uh, some other nuggets I'm going to share with you. Um, I, well, I'm not going to get into any of these. You just know Amazon is 49% of all retail commerce in the United States. So I don't know what you're selling out there. But if you're not creating a niche for yourself, if you're not creating stories and you're trying to compete with these guys simply on features and benefits, you're going to lose. The future belongs to companies willing to invest time in speaking with people. Whoever gets close to the customer wins. So what that simply means is I know that we all want to be digital and everything, and that's cool. We do. If you can integrate some reality into that, where you actually at a point talking to the customer, that's going to set you apart because Amazon doesn't have time to talk to their customers. Be different. Send emails without links. Include your personal email or phone number in an email. Make it super short. A couple sentences. Less is best. These are the things we learned. Post unrelated content about whatever you're selling on social media. Don't make it always about what you're selling. Answer the stupid questions. Go back to the basics. What I mean by that is whatever you're selling, just don't assume that people understand everything. Go back and, and answer those easy, easy questions about whatever it is. Uh, people will do crazy things for t-shirts. Stickers are magical. Stickermule.com. You get stickers there. So I'm going super fast. Um, define new categories in your niche. Like think about the Untuck It shirt. They sell shirts. Have you seen this uh, commercial? They're just selling shirts, something that's been around for hundreds of years. They're just created a different, a new category, that short the short shirt. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at it. They're, they're made a multi-million dollar brand out of it. Create a movement. A movement is what, what happens when you change your story, your customer or prospect is telling about themselves. That's a movement. Um, you don't have to focus on features if you share what you believe. For example, razor blades should be so expensive, should not be so expensive. There's a lot of these razor companies that are selling razors online and they're just, they're just marketing the concept that, hey, we're a better deal. They don't even talk about the features and they're killing it. Um, the apprenticeship economy is happening now. The companies who win in, in this new economy will bear the burden of educating, training, and empowering their workforce. I'm just giving you sound bites. I know we could, there's so much to learn. A couple little nuggets I'll give you. Um, Hemingwayapp.com judges your copy and tells you what's boring and unbelievable. That's something you might, you could run your copy through it, go learn about how to use that. Naturalreaders.com is a free text-to-speech app. You can actually put your story in there and have it li listen to it back and see what doesn't flow right, what, what might be boring. It reads it back. Anyway, that's really quick. I'm just here to tell you, before I hand it back to Susan, is that the same old thinking is going to keep giving you the same old results. If you are sitting here, I know there's a lot of you out there that are frustrated. You, you feel like your business has gone stagnant and stale. You don't know what to do. I'm telling you. There is a lot of money out there, tons of money being made, new opportunity, new ways of thinking. You know, there's new ways to make money out there. And you just got to expand your thinking. And that's what we're here to do at the agency in the next couple months. Wait till you see what we've got planned. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. So Susan, I'm going to send it back to you. Oh my gosh, Diana, I want everyone in the chat to share something they just learned. I was taking copious notes and I was at the same conference. Oh my gosh. Um, it's, you know, I love what you shared about the story selling. I love, you know, the reality is you've got to stop the scroll, write that down, stop the scroll. And so story selling, um, what's called the hook, you know, what, what stops that person's scroll dead in their tracks. Um, so, so important and being expansive in your thinking, you know, some of you have not been expansive in your thinking. And as a result, your, your finances reflect that. There is a lot of money being made. If 23 year olds can make over $10 million a year, you can too, right? And so um, it's a lot of fun. And I think if you just embrace it, it's gonna be amazing. So we have um, decided, you know, we're always like, how can we serve our clients better? And uh, there are some, 
you know, there are givers and takers. I learned this a long time ago and you want to give way more in value than you take in remuneration. So we're actually going to do something. It's starting on St. Patrick's day. Um, and it's going to be all the things we just intimated, but in a fully, immersive experience and so whether you are um you know regardless you know whether whatever it is you're marketing you're gonna benefit from it and i'm gonna tell you this right now the only hint i'm gonna give you is it's gonna be ridiculously inexpensive to work with us um it's just just for this thing we're doing for a month, it's going to be $47. So um, if you don't have $47, it might not be for you. I do have to charge for my time. I get paid quite a bit to consult. So, but we're going to do it and you can't even pay for it right now. Um, but here's how you get to it. It's www.30days um, to revenue.com, 30 days to revenue.com. And, um, you know, the thing I'm going to say, you know, as I was talking about Facebook ads and the, the matrix and how you do all that stuff, um, you know, that's going to really be powerful. And there, as I said, there are only, um, really two marketing platforms that this can actually work on to do what we're going to do. Um, but it doesn't matter what business, if it's a network marketing business or you're a coach or a consultant or whatever it is, you will be able to do it. And I know Diana, you want to just share a couple thoughts, but you can opt in now and you can share it. Um, we are going to limit the number of people doing this. I'm not going to kid you, but Diana, did you, I know you want to share a couple things here. Absolutely. Uh, everyone, what we're going to be venturing into for the $47 offer that we're going to be rolling out this, this particular mini program is unlike anything we've done before. It's about expanding your thinking about ways you can generate revenue that could be the very thing you're marketing now or could be things you've never thought about marketing. We, if you are struggling to make income where you're at, it's either one or two things. You're not marketing what you have correctly or you need to be marketing something else, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, we have all kinds of people in our agency, they're selling anything from a physical product to a network marketing product to their own services, whatever. And we wanna take whatever it is and help you decide, okay, is that should, what you should be marketing, how to market it, and maybe there's other things you could market. This is going to be revolutionary what we're getting into because then it's going to climax to something even bigger and more mind blowing at the end of that. That's still going to be super affordable. Anyone can afford it. I, and some of you are spending more to go out to dinner than what we're going to be charging. To do this. I'm serious. So if you are intrigued by what we're talking about, just go to that website, put your name in. And all we're going to do is we're not going to spam you. If you've never been on our mailing list before, that list is only for this promotion. We will let you know here very soon what it is, when it starts, then you can decide if you want to join us, then you can come in and from there you can decide if you want to take it to the next level. Like I said, still affordable, still less than probably going out to dinner. Susan, yeah. that's all I wanted to say. Well, thanks Diana. And there are questions. You might be wondering, is this for agency clients only? No. Um, do you have to be super techie? Not really, but you know, don't worry. I'm, I used to be a professional teacher, so, um, not a like grade school teacher, but professor. So I'm going to break things down. So if you're confused by pixel, if you're confused by all that stuff, don't worry about it. Um, so it's not for agency clients only. We are limiting the number of people who can do this. Um, but if you don't have one massive breakthrough for $47, I'll give you your money back after 30 days. So that's the way I feel about it. Um, it is going to be insane. It is like, you know, marketing boot camp 101. Um, but Diana and I, here's I, Diana, I, I can't, I'm really good at holding back secrets, but there's something I am going to share. Diana and I are actually going to be not only teaching it, but, um, and we will bring in some guests as well over the course of 30 days, but we're going to be funneling something right along with you. Um, so, which is really, really cool. And I'm also going to be um, building a funnel for one of my classes. So we're going to be right in the weeds with you, doing it with you. Um, and it's going to be incredible. Um, so that's, you know, you can share it, whatever. Um, but we are going to cap it just because um, there's, 
you know, only so much we can do, but that is coming and it is starting on St. Patrick's Day. And you might be wondering, what if I'm hungover? What if I'm in a pub drinking on St. Patrick's Day? That's okay. If you can't be on the live training, you will get that recording. And every day there's going to be a task that you're going to have to do 30 days to revenue. But what if at the end of that 30 days, your business grows, you create more sales, you get more leads, you do whatever. So it's gonna be awesome. So if you're excited, say yes in the chat. How many of you have already opted into that? <laughs> yeah, and you can't even pay, because it's not set up for that. Just put your email in, we haven't even done it. Um, there's no guarantee that you are gonna get in. Um, I will tell you that. Um, so we are, Diana has set that up. Um, the last thing I wanna say, we do have a full-on immersion event here in Scottsdale. Everything from um, how to build your sales page to how to write copy, the hook, the story, um, all of it. Um, it is going to be full-on immersion, funnel building, traffic, um, NLP copy, like it's insane. And um, I was talking to an influencer and they were like, you're only charging that you should, they're like, you need to be charging more than that. And um, I am making it available to a small group of people. I know some of you are already registered. Um, it's going to be phenomenal. So if you're doing the VIP package, you're going to get professional photos and videos. Because how many of you think, oh my gosh, I don't have professional photos. I don't have professional videos. This is an unedited photo of myself and my photographer, Tony Taft. Um, Tony has done stuff for Rolling Stone. He is a major badass. He's incredible. Um, we have, I think, two spots left in VIP. Um, and this is unedited so if any of you have ever looked at my photos like recently and got oh my gosh she looks so good this is like him this is him he's amazing um, and he's a cancer survivor and he's just a he's a dog dad he's I love Tony he's a sweetheart he's he's from the UK he's just like awesome this is where it is if it's snowing where you are today I just have to tell you how gorgeous is this palm trees spa amazing this is the Hyatt Regency Scottsdale we do have a room rate um, so put two or three people in a room. Um, these are just some of the people teaching. Brennan Agronoff was a millionaire at 16 with his sock company. He's training. Um, JJ Burden, some of you know him. He's one of our clients, um, smallest player in the NFL. He's going to be talking about mindset. We're going to be talking about tactics. We're going to, um, Jeff Cox is going to come and do startup diaries. Like if you've ever thought about starting a physical company, um, he's going to talk you through that. And Stephanie is teaching one of our clients and Stephanie, um, you know, she has her amazing um, affirmation cards. And um, I really believe Stephanie's business is a multi-million dollar business that she has. It's just scaling it, doing some more story selling and things like that, that she's learning here. She's here, which is awesome. Pricing, you might be wondering how much it is. General session tickets are only $997. Dinah's like, you know, really what's the price of dinner? What's the price of all the things you do? It is a business expense. Um, and if you want to do one of those VIP tickets, they're $29.97. You get the photo package with Tony, the video package with Steven. We're going to go to the Sanctuary Resort with celebrity chef Bo McMillan. He's one of our clients at the agency. Um, they're doing a, a thing called the food and wine Nirvana. You don't have to drink wine, but I'm going to drink wine. We're going to go one of the nights and um, we can do a lot of photos there. It's beautiful. It is one of the celebrities go there. It's a private club restaurant and it's very, very exclusive. So, uh, and it's halfway up Camelback Mountain. The views are ridiculous. So if you do want to do this, um, just go to susansly.com and you can click on, you know, products store only four days, or you can just go to only four days.com. You know, I love me a website. Um, the last thing that I want to say uh, just in closing here is that you know um, pricing is going up on March 21st to 14.97. I am running this event at cost. Internet alone, as some of you know, this is four thousand dollars a day, and I can't teach a digital marketing event without internet. So um, you're going to have Wi-Fi in the room. The way the event is going to work is that you are physically going to be taught a skill. Okay, we're talking about sales pages, the hook, the story. And then you're going to have time to go build a page with supervision 
in the room and then we're having something after each session called art gallery there's no event like this diana and i did three weeks of digital marketing events we didn't have a second to go and build something there's no event like this so you're going to build it and put it up in the art gallery and we're going to be able to lovingly give feedback or show you you know what's right what's not right so it's not an event where you another event where you just sit there like so many i go to and you're learning and you have 50 pages of notes and you're so freaking confused and you you don't execute anything um, if you need to break it up into two payments go email info at susanslide.com I would rather love on all of you my staff does not like this they're gonna freak out um, and they're on right now I'm sorry to do this to you but um, just go to info at susanslaw.com, send an email. Um, if you have questions about the event, send an email to us. We will answer those questions. Um, and it is going to be phenomenal, phenomenal. And I'm actually, <laughs> I'm <clears throat> convincing lovingly um, my daughter's boyfriend, the one who he, uh, just, to, um, just to run an Instagram page, um, not including traffic. He charges at least $4,000 a month, um, sometimes 10. He's off to, he has clients in Vancouver, in Honolulu, in Sydney. He's off right now traveling, seeing his clients. Um, he generates for some of them hundreds of thousands a month in sales. Um, and I'm going to convince him to come and, and stop by. Um, I have a lot of friends here in the Valley. You never know who's going to stop by and do some training, but you will leave with that clarity and that certainty. Um, and you might be wondering, can I really afford this? And I would say, can you really afford not to? That's the question I have for you. Um, because I don't care what kind of business you're in. We are in a digital world that is not going away. Um, and so again, if you need to break it into two payments, go to info at susansly.com. I know some of you are a Canadian and there's the travel and the dollar. Just email us at info at susansly.com. We want to help you and serve you. We really, our vision here is, at the agency is to help you grow and succeed. Um, the last, last thing I'm going to say is, um, again, back to the, the challenge, the revenue challenge. Um, you might be wondering, well, if I do that, do I still need to come and immerse myself? Yes, because the, the $47 revenue challenge, it's not the same as immersion. We're going to give you homework and you're going to have to go do it. If you have any kind of misgivings about knowing how to do things, why not just come and immerse yourself, right? So with that, I want to thank Diana. I want to thank all of our agency team. They're so awesome. Bobby, Tisha, Diana, Renee, they were all uh, in San Diego learning. Um, you know, so with that, I want to wish you all the most success um, and by all means you know stay connected with us we would love to help you if you have an idea and you're like hey you know if we get enough questions we're happy to do another webinar like this because we our goal is just to serve and educate and really help you grow and scale your businesses so with that god bless everyone love you guys this has been recorded we're going to throw it up onto youtube that just sounded bad we're going to put it up on youtube so you'll be able to share it with anyone um, so with that take care and uh, we'll see you in a future session and hopefully in our revenue challenge. Goodbye, everybody.